here? Am I live? Can you guys see me? Hold on, I gotta got my laptop up here. I wanna make sure it's all working. Hey, good to see you guys. As you can see, I have dressed up for the occasion. Uh, welcome to the um, True Colors pre-show. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, I think I might have overbooked this thing a bit, if I'm honest, uh, in the sense that I, I think I planned too many things. I'm trying to jam too much into too short a time. Uh, I'm also a total grandpa when it comes to uh, streaming and, and doing something like this. This is actually way more ambitious than uh, anything I've ever done before. Uh, so I just want you to know it's going to be super chill. It may not all go according to plan, um, but I do have somewhat of an agenda. Uh, so here's how I figure things are happening. Um, I've got a lot of fun things. Uh, the first thing I have is an interview with one of the voice actors uh, who's going to be coming on live um, in just a few moments here. Uh, the awkward thing about that is that like, I'm just going to pipe in straight from a Discord call. Uh, her first time using Discord like this, also mine, sort of, not not super great at it. Um, so we're going to have a very short interview with her, which I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Uh, then maybe we'll do a couple questions, you know what I mean, from, from Twitter. Um, and then maybe we'll do another interview, because there are a few, and I can't wait to share them with you. Um, and then at around... Um, 7.40, 7.30, uh, probably 7.40, because I think the interviews are going to go a little long. Uh, I'm going to bring the crew in, uh, and we're going to play a game together, uh, a crazy amphibia quiz that story editor Jack Ferriello put together. Um, but I really just think it's going to be uh, a blast. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Anyway, all right, guys, are you ready? I'm going to go ahead and get our special guest in here. Bear with me, again, it's, this is going to be a technical nightmare. It's going to be a mess. But thank you all for coming out tonight. We're going to have a great time. We're just going to talk about the show, talk about the things we love, all gearing up for hopefully the launch of True Colors at 9 p.m. Another caveat, you know, I hope it shows up on Xfinity. I know how that's, you know, that's the majority of how you guys watch the show. If it doesn't show up, you know, because it might not, who knows, so much stuff has happened with, with True Colors. I hope it does. If not, it'll probably air, you know what I mean, at 8 p.m. tomorrow. I mean, knock on wood, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I'm gearing everything towards the idea that at 9 p.m. you guys will get to leave and watch the episode. Um, so that's it. So let me go ahead and get things prepared for our first guest. Give me one second. Do, do, do. I can figure this out. I'm very smart. Ha ha ha. Hopefully nobody's watching. Let's see. Video caption. All right, here we go. Let us do this thing. Let's give this thing a whirl. Can you see me? I cannot see you. Can you see me? Oh, I can see you. Well, that's a good start. No, me too. This is, this is, uh, no worries, no worries. No, hey, join the club. I was just telling. Awesome. Hey, hey. I could for a second there. Wait, what happened? Oh, 
these kids are gonna be nuts. <laughs> no, they'll be fine. And hold on, I gotta get the I gotta get the interview questions up anyway. Ah, oh, there you are. All right, we can see you. Awesome, fantastic, guys. This is Jill Bartlett. She is the voice of Maddie Flower, and I'm so excited to have a very short interview with her today. How's it going, man? Hi. How are you? It's so nice to see your face. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you are such a, a wonderful voice actor. I love working with you. I love your character, and a lot of people do. So I know they're really excited to hear from you today. Uh, you're kind of one of those actors that, like, I can't believe Maddie's voice is coming out of you. You know what I mean? Like, could you could you do a little Maddie for us just to kind of prove it? Oh my God! No, that is pitch perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let me let me get these questions up, and we will fly through them. Oh, uh, but thank you, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. This is an utter delight. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, my pleasure. All right, here we go. Question number one: How did you come up with Maddie's voice? It's incredible. They send me a picture of the character, and it's weird. I just kind of close my eyes, and the voice just kind of presents itself to me. I've never really had to belabor like over character voices. It's like the the the, the animation tells me what the voice is. Record it real quick on my phone. Tweak it in a booth. But um, Maddie came out of me in five seconds, and that's how I know it's a character that's right for me. Awesome. Yeah, no, it does feel very natural. I mean, it sounds nothing like your speaking voice, but it does feel natural. All right. Question two. Maddie is without a doubt one of the most popular Wartwoodians. Why do you think this is? You know what? And this is a weird answer, but I think she's the one of the most relatable characters on the show. And I'll tell you why. It's because in life, I think a universal theme is being misunderstood sort of that whole judging a book by its cover. And I think all the kids that watch the show, and especially me now even, and as a teenager, I was never on the outside what I was on the inside. And so I think people really relate to Maddie because she looks a certain way, but people judge her, but that's not who she is on the inside. And she's dying to show them who she really is and get that chance. And that's why I think that she's so loved. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I also think that's why she's so fun to write for. All right, question three, yeah. kind of related. Also, I saw some comments saying that uh, your your mic quality was low. I think that's that's on my end. I, I just turned you up a little bit. I hope that I hope that has solved the problem. Um, Is that better? I I, just I think so. I don't know. Uh, I think I I hope so. Let me you know the the chat is delayed, so it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of weirdness. Um, okay, hopefully hopefully that has has. Uh, improved things. At least I hope so. Um, okay. I'll get closer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, if all else fails, yeah, I think, I think that will help. All right. Good segue though. Um, question number three, do you relate to Maddie? Are, are you anything like her? I'm exactly like her. I, I, I'm the most chronically misunderstood person that's ever lived. People look at me and they think one thing and it's the complete opposite of who I am. I'm really weird and eccentric and kind of, um, you know how Maddie is hard on the outside but she's soft on the inside? I'm sort of soft on the outside and fierce on the inside. Understood, understood. I relate to that. I think a lot of people look at me and they underestimate me, but I'm a fighter inside, you know? Underestimated. That's <laughs> the name of our new show. All right, question four. If you were dropped into the world of amphibia, how do you think you'd do? Would you survive? This question made me laugh so much because here's the way I'm not like Maddie. I don't have street smarts. I'd go up to the worst monster ever and kiss it on the nose and hug it and be like, oh, you're so sad, and it would eat me. <laughs> hey, no worries. I would also 
not do very well there, I will admit. I'm, I'm 100% uh, more of a glamper. I would be done in just a few days. <laughs> Give me some concrete and a martini. Yeah. Don't give me monsters and scary birds. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. All right, here we go. Last question. More of a request. Could you please deliver a message to the fans in Maddie's voice, anything you'd like? I wrote something for them. Oh my God. I read it, is that okay? Please, please. Because I didn't memorize it. Okay. <clears throat> you guys ready? Hi guys. I just want to say that it's my honor and privilege to be a spokesperson for all the awesome, weird, misunderstood, misfit kids who feel like they may not fit in. I'm here to tell you that if you just love yourself, people will have no choice but to love you. And if they don't, I'll curse on them. Win-win. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jill. It was so wonderful to speak to you. Thanks for coming on. Have a great weekend, and thanks for all your support. Oh, yeah, please. I want to do one little shout out to the three little special Wartwoodians. The first one is my favorite sweet Jack in uh, Indiana. My second one is another Jack in Colorado. I love you. And the third one is my little Wartwoodian, Arlo. Yay, Arlo. All right. Thank you, Jill, so much. Have a great weekend. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, awesome. Ooh, sorry about the audio problems there, guys. It's really tricky because like I'm getting like notifications on my phone and stuff, and uh, I will admit I probably need like a team helping me out here. Uh, going, going solo. All right, but um, wow, you know I I have not talked to her in in so long. <laughs> it was really nice to see her. Hey, let me see. Video capture out. Let's get that video capture device back. This work. All right. Let me look at the chat here. Okay, cool. So. That was our first interview. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that. The next thing I want to share is something a little bit different, um, and it comes with a little bit of a story. Uh, so in season one of Amphibia for uh, reunion, you know what I mean, the big season finale, we all get together, and we, we have these amazing storyboard pitches, and they're really big events, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we all share this moment, and we see this story for the first time. Well, the crew surprised me with an impromptu performance of our theme song. Um, and we actually got it recorded. So I'm gonna play that for you today. And it's it's just one of my favorite things. Let me just pull it up so that you can see it. All right, one second, please. Hope everyone's doing well. The chat is going like way too fast. So like, I, I, I can't really read anything, but like, I'm just so happy you guys are here. I'm happy you're excited about the episode. I'm happy that you're you're into the show as much as you are. Your support means everything to us. I can't tell you that like, you know, the last few weeks, they've been rough, man. <laughs> they've been rough, I won't lie. So having you guys around and hearing the, the wonderful things or reading the wonderful things you wrote, like it really lifted us all up, me and the crew, because, you know, um, and I really feel like with your help, we like pulled through and now we finally got our premiere tomorrow. So I don't want to get sappy on this thing, but there you have it. Okay, let's see here. Pre-show. Also, it's kind of funny. I have like a pretty old computer. This is pushing her to her goddamn limits. She sounds like a PS4 over here. Okay, let's see. All right. Let me just... Window camera. All right, can you guys see this? All right, so the uh, the man playing the piano, that's Nate Maurer. He, he was a, a board artist. Uh, um, and on the, on, the, on the bongos there is Todd McClintock. Uh, on the guitar there is, is Bert Ian, one of the directors. And then and Jen Strickland on the ukulele. Um, and there's a lot of backup too. So I'm going to play this thing for you. It's really dorky. I, I hope you enjoy it. Here we go.
Sorry, I just I'm I there's a there's a delay on the on the chat and I'm hearing now that I uh there's no volume on this thing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> One second, let me try to figure this out for you. It should be streaming the audio right from the thing, right? Is the audio low or is it just not there? Let's see. Should I do media source? Um, I could just try to like, hold on, let me, let me consult one of my, my tech experts here. One second, guys, I'm so sorry. You gotta hear this though, it's so good. And also all the other interviews are pre-recorded, so if you can't hear it, that is not good. Hold on, let me let me test a little bit of this thing. Okay, so now I'm being told that it was uh, it's not that it's silent, but it was just very low. I don't really know what the deal is there. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Streaming software. Test the volume sliders. I mean, the volume slider is turned up all the way. I'm using OBS. It should be it should be pretty good. Um. No, output is at max. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Man, that's a bummer. I don't really know how to, how to get it going for you guys. Let's see. Um, media source. Let's see what this looks like. this gonna work? No way, right? Because this is gonna like upload it. Uh, no, for sure not. It's not gonna work. Well, I could always do this. Speakers. Can you hear that? It's funny because of the delay, I can't really. And the chat too is is struggling for me. Hold on, let me, let me check. One second, one second. It'll be worth it though. If I can get this working, then you guys can see the other. Let's see, you can change it by OBS sources, audio output capture properties, change the default to the correct device. Da, 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 da. Um, Let's see. Oof. Sources at audio output capture. Sources. All right, let me try. Okay, so you can hear that. Maybe, maybe that's just the way to go. Then maybe I should just play it off of, uh, off the speakers. Here, let me start it over. All right, here we go.
All right, well, that worked. Awesome, guys. Uh, I have no idea what the streaming quality was on that. Probably not good. Um, but uh, it was really nice. And, you know, that was the first time anyone had ever seen um, Reunion before. Uh, and I'll never forget that moment. You know what I mean? Like, And I'm so glad that, that, that somebody filmed it um, so that I can have it forever now that I've shared it with you guys. All right, let's see, how are we doing? Okay, it's 7, 7.20. I'm so, again, uh, apologies for all the technical stuff. I am a little bit shit at this, but hopefully you're still enjoying it anyway, and I've still got a lot more, so hang in there. All right, next up, I have another interview. This time, it was pre-recorded because of scheduling, um, but it's very cool, so get ready. Here we go. Sorry for all the notifications I'm getting and stuff. I've got a lot of people helping me out, and I should I should silence them, but uh, I do not have the headspace to do that right now. Um, okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Audio. Man, mad props for anyone who does this like for a living. It is it's not super easy. All right, let's see. Aha! 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 So here we have an interview with Brian Maillard, who is the voice of Loggle. Here you go. Please enjoy. And again, I'll, I'll leave the sound the way it is so that you can just hear what you can hear. Hopefully, it's all very clear. All right, here we go. All right, hey guys. With me, I have Brian Maillard, who is the voice of everybody's favorite woodsmith, Loggle. Hi, Brian. Will you say hi? Hey, everybody. See my, um, my wood shop behind us here? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like you're there. Will you right. Will you actually do a little Loggle for folks? Because you have one of those kinds of characters where, like, I can't believe this voice is coming out of you. Yeah, uh, sure. All I do is I just become an old man who can't see anything and Suddenly I'm Loggle. Wow, very convincing. <laughs> I mean, it gets me every time. It's like magic. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we just had some quick questions today, but I'm so excited. I'm excited. To talk to you. All right, here we go. Question number one. How did you come up with the voice for Loggle? Very good question. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the first sketch I saw was, uh, had, the, had the, the goggles with the magnifying lenses, and that was my clue because I figured he was – you know, the, the first lines I had to do, he was like looking at, at Hop Hop's cane, I believe, and he's going, ah, yes, oh, maybe, ah. and it was that sound, that kind of like to himself grumbling, like, oh, very interesting, all right, that that was how I found it, so then I was just like, yep, I can do it, everything just comes from that place, you know, so that was, that was the, the key, uh, which is not always the case, sometimes you really search to find the right voice, but Loggle, Loggle was like first try, as soon as I found that sound, I was like, oh, that's it. That's awesome. I, I don't remember super well, but I think the character's side, it was just like, he likes wood, maybe a little too much. And like, that was like... Yeah. <laughs> right. And I was like, say no more. Yeah. Slightly creepy. A little bit of weird. Yeah. yeah I got it. Yeah. That's I can funny. embody that. Sure. <laughs> I got what you need. Um, question number two. Loggle is the kind of character fans are always happy to see and has some of the show's best jokes. Uh, what about him is so appealing in your opinion? I love Loggle because he's he, he he's almost a simpleton <laughs> in that like he's so sweet and so like even when he tries to be mean he like at the end of an episode will be like that's okay I forgive you you know everybody he's just and most of the people in Amphibia are like that with some obvious exceptions um, you know even when even when they're done wrong by by Mayor Toadstool or by anybody they kind of come back around at the end and say everything's fine you know and so that's why I love doing Loggle because. He's so positive and he's so into wood and so into like the things that he loves. So it doesn't matter what people do to him and things like that. And also I love, I love in animation, any show, like the guy who just comes in, hits a home run joke and then leaves. Like I, I tell people if I'm allowed to, 
talk about other shows and stuff like it, it's like comic book guy on the simpsons like he comes in he just nails a great joke and then you don't see him for four episodes but it's fine because people love comic book guy and that's what i the way i feel about lago like he's just he's pure and goodness in his heart he loves what he loves and every now and then he drops drops bombs <laughs> <laughs> i agree i think that's why i love him too <laughs> anytime yeah. like we have like an odd line like that we don't know who quite to give to it's always like who can we give this to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. And also, like the, the like the weird mythology that you just allude to, like the wooden carving of himself. That like that Sprig is like, we're gonna have to talk about this hot pop, or excuse me, Lago. And like, it's just what what happens after the after the shop closes at night. Lago's just chiseling away at a, yeah. <laughs> a statue of himself. You know, well, it's that's, great. That's a good segue because question three is, what do you think Lago does on his off time? Yeah, I don't think there is off time. I think it's all wood all the time. Uh, well, you know, or if he does, it's like it's another intri- intricate hobby, like painting Civil War figurines, whatever the amphibia equivalent of Civil War. You know, maybe he's painting toads, their little pants, and their you know things like that. He he's got to be because obviously you have if you have that eyepiece that you're looking at different levels of magnification. There's there's clearly something that you're constantly focused on. So I think that's the kind of mind he has. Just always busy. He's like my mom. My mom's always chopping down a tree, and she lives in North Carolina, and she sends me pictures. She's 73, and she's got a chainsaw. I'm like, Mom, what? please please be careful. She's like, no, nah, it's great. <laughs> so she's always doing something. I think that's what Bob looks like. Oh, man, that's amazing. We've got to talk yeah. more about that later. Sure, um, sure. All right, question number four. Do you relate to your character at all? Maybe dabble in woodwork yourself? Uh, I, I don't do, do woodwork. Um, I have, but when I, when I was – young my sister and i were whittling and she sliced her thumb <laughs> like almost lost it and i was like okay whittling done i'm <laughs> done with that you know so uh but but i do i do share the the like the focus on when i find something that i love and that i'm, I'm all in on i'm up till two o'clock on the internet on internet researching it and you know learning everything about it and then for the next week i'm an expert and say you know did you know that fences were originally built in you know <laughs> whatever it is uh, so I can I can I can certainly relate to the the attention to detail that he must have. <laughs> um, it's a good quality to have, though. Good quality to have. Right. All right. Obsessive to a to a point until yeah, I get bored and then I move Dedicated, on. dedicated, focus. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, question number five is a personal question. If you were dropped okay. into amphibia, how do you think you'd do? Would you survive? You know, I I think I would, and I'll tell you why. I grew up in the wilds of New Jersey, which everybody thinks is Newark Airport, but it really is the Garden State. And I had a river in my backyard, and so I had turtles and frogs and and salamanders and everything all over my whole childhood, collected them. Like one day I was playing with a turtle all day. My dad came home. He's like, you know, that's a snapping turtle, right? That You could have taken your finger off. I was like, that's fine. So like I I have been surrounded by am, by amphibia my whole life. So I think I would do well. I'm not sure about the diet though. I see Anne and her willingness to just start scarfing down bugs at this point, and I'm not sure I would necessarily go along with it. But who knows? I think by I think, month, I, month month three you'd be into right. it. <laughs> the options are pretty limited, so I think I wouldn't really have a choice. It's either that or starve. So dragonflies, it is. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian. You've been an utter delight. You're amazing as Loggle. I I love that guy. He's like one of my favorite sporting characters. It's so. my pleasure. It's like my when I get the call that we're going in to record some more. I'm like, yes, I can't wait to read what crazy joke that he has gotten himself involved in. So thank you for having me, and thanks for having me be a part of this amazing show. All right, that was Brian. That was really awesome of him to do that. All right, so before we move on to the next interview, guys, I'm going to go through some questions on Twitter and answer them at rapid rapid speed, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> Got my phone out. All right. Uh, Armic, uh, can the others see how the girl's eyes sparkle? Sure, but they'd have to be really, really, really close. Uh, you, uh, who is your favorite? What is your favorite episode and why? Uh, my favorite episode is True Colors, and you're about to find out why. Uh, uh, Mega, will Sasha get redeemed? Uh, you're going to have to watch and find out. Uh, um, do you think, uh, Alexis, uh, do you think Sasha sees Grime as her comrade, friend, or father? Um, I feel like she absolutely sees him as an equal. Um, this is not a question. It just says Loggle. He likes wood maybe a little too much. That's true. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Cass says, where, uh, where do you pull inspiration from the show? Um, my life, 
uh, you know what I mean? But also, um, I have so many team members who have kind of put things from their own lives into the show. So it's not just me. It's like a whole, like, you know, hobo stew of experiences. Um, blah, blah, blah. Armic says, could Amphibia and the Boiling Islands be connected? I don't see why not. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, do, 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 do. Here's my question. Will we get to see uh, alt account just random? Uh, will we get to see any more places in Amphibia? Uh, absolutely, sure. You, places in Amphibia? Like, do you mean like a outside of the the continent, or do you mean on the continent? Outside the continent? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're gonna be stuck on that Pac-Man forever. Uh, but but but. Uh, Free Palestine says, "Where the?" <laughs> I'm just kidding. At Mr. Mason the second says, "Will there be any more Sprig and Polycentric episodes?" Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, at, uh, Annie Poten asks, hi, Matt, and, uh, can get her shoes back or will she always, uh, or, or, or will she only have one shoe? And, uh, uh you're going to have to wait and see, but you're, you're actually going to find out. You're going to find out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Anir Bastuff, uh, question, if you could live in only one region, where would it be? Um, honestly, <laughs> I'd love to live in, in Newtopia. Uh, I said before I'm a glamper. Uh, I would just not do well in Wartwood, and I would certainly not do well in Toad Tower. Um, all right, we'll read some more questions later. Now, it is on to the next interview, and this one is a banger. Here we go. Who is it? Who could it be? Uh, yeah, you see what I mean when I, I, I kind of overbooked this thing. But So we'll probably play the game with the crew probably closer to 8. I'm just going to throw that out there now, but, but I'm going to try to speed up a little bit. I've been kind of like a little bit slow. Okay, here we go. Next interview. It's go time. Da 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 Yeah, baby. All right, here we go. Zara was so nice to come in and do this. Thank you so much, Zara. Love you to bits. Hey guys, um, this is Matt Brawley. I have a very special treat for you here. With me is Zara. She is the voice of General Yunnan, um, a fan favorite. And I'm so excited because I've got some questions for her today. We're going to do a little interview. We can get into her head, you know what I mean, how she came up with the character. Um, but I thought this would be just a real treat to hear from her. So here we go. We're going to launch into it. Um, how are you feeling, Zara? I'm feeling great, Matt. Thanks for having me. All right. Here we go. Question one. How did you craft the voice for General Yunnan? What was going through your head when you auditioned for her? Honestly, Matt, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think I've ever said this. Um, when I got the audition sides, it included, of course, her famous speech. And so I decided to do my version of Darkwing Duck. I was a huge fan of Darkwing Duck as a kid, and his I am the terror that blasts the night speech kind of reminded me of what was written for General Yunnan. For sure. And so I was like, this is my Darkwing. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, no, I can totally hear it now. That's, that's amazing. That's so funny. What a ham. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I love characters like that who have so much pride and such a big ego that it kind of blinds them sometimes from what's going on around them. That's like my favorite type of character to play. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because um, uh, when we first wrote the character, she was a little bit more like Brienne of Tarth, like she was very what? stoic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And visually, she still has some of those, some of those traits, but... Uh, she used to be very dry and very serious, and I remember like doing the table read or, or, or talking about the character and just thinking like, man, this character should be way more fun. You know what I mean? Like we we always want to like kind of like do not what the audience is, is is expecting, but do something that you'll you'll love. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. like it's not what you expected, but you love it even more because of it. Right, right. That's right. awesome. Um, I absolutely hear the Dark Wing. That's amazing. <laughs> also, a little Team Rocket. Um... Oh yes. Any, yes. any kind of performance, presentation, speech, when a character has it, I'm like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, Team Rocket. Yeah, I, I think characters, you know, who, who recite, uh, I get the feeling they really love themselves. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It makes you love them. Awesome. It's great we aspire to love ourselves. Exactly, exactly right. Um, all right, question two. 
General Yunin, she's one of our most popular characters. She was almost immediately after her debut. Why do you think people like her so much? I mean, she is this absolutely crazy, sadistic, like, murderer. I mean, I remember when your season two poster came out and, like, there were clips from season two without any audio dialogue. And I think people really fell in love with her design. Like, kudos to your design team. Like, she's just so cool looking. I mean, the Wolverine claws and that whole Brienne of Tarth aesthetic. You're like, who is this newt knight? <laughs> and so I think people fell in love with her design. And then, I mean, the writing was just so funny in that episode. And, um, you know, just her dogged persistence. And the fact that, I mean, to me, what I fell in love with about her when I first saw the image of her was that her eyes look so... Like, they don't touch the sides of the eyes at all. Her pupils don't touch the sides. And to me, that that tells you everything you need to know. Right, about like a little her. crazy. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. I think, um, our, so our character designer, Joe Sparrow, when we were uh, developing season two, we just asked him, like, do a page of, of newts who you think live in the city of Newtopia. Like, what does that feel like? And he just did a lineup of, like, all these characters. And right in there was this, you know, Lady Newt Knight. And I think it was kind of her proto design, and from there we pulled her out. And the design was so good that we were like, that's got to be a character somehow, you know what I mean? So I think that, yes, I think there is something about the design. I think she has a little bit of like Vegeta in her hair. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah, yeah. And very, very, very also Pearl from Steven Universe, you know what I mean? I think it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's. Yeah. Pulled, there's a lot of there's a lot in the ether right now that I feel was pulled absolutely. when she was created. Yeah, absolutely and that, that resonates with people. Absolutely, but I think combined with with your voice, you know what I mean, it really made it really well, made I it happen. I won't disagree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good segue. Question number three: Are you at all similar to Yunin? Do you relate to her? I mean, I'll be real with you. I a bit of an ego myself, but I don't think it's quite as big as the generals. Um, I think she's a lot better at physical stuff than I am. I'm, a bit, I'm, not, I'm not a wimp, but I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> oh, you so sound I'm, like a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I admire her uh, martial arts skills. Mm. I think we're both very persistent and um, very uh, cunning in terms of uh, She's more impulsive than I am, a little bit. <laughs> but I would say that's a quality we share. I, I tend to follow my impulses um, more than I think I would have, I've been taught to. Hmm. Does that make sense? I yeah, it does. Growing up, I had to be like very good and very good yes. at school and very work hard, very hard. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned to, if I want to do something, I should go for it because... Ooh. Usually the, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. I hear that. And I, I relate deeply, too. I feel like I also was raised uh, a little bit strict, a little bit like, hey, you got to stay in line and behave. And that's, that's I, I get what you're saying where you're like, oh, I'm pushing my boundaries. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know where that is, like, <laughs> globally, but I'm definitely pushing my boundaries. Right, right. Oh, Everybody else that. might see me and be like, oh, that's very vanilla. But I'm like, no, 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 man. <laughs> yeah, it's hardcore. <laughs> oh, I love it. Great. Oh, this is uh, uh, also a good segue. Question four. Um, do you think you would survive if you were stuck in the dangerous world of Amphibia? Would you side with the frogs, the newts, or the toads? Ooh, okay. So this is what I think my strategy would be. Again, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I would find a lovely marshy cave and just kind of like cuddle up in there with a fire and cook. Like, I don't know. I feel like I feel I should I should say newts, but I feel an affinity to the frogs because they're just so cute. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like the humans have a lot of drama going on, and I mm. kind of like to be away from from the drama. So I would go to my cave and I'd have my little froggy friends and we'd cuddle. Oh, that sounds amazing! I think you would have a very wonderful life. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, all right, here we go. Last question. Okay. Have you uh, have you memorized <laughs> crazy introduction? And if so, could you do it for us right now on the spot? No okay. pressure. Okay. I have it memorized just because when we recorded that first episode, she says it so much. Yeah, she sure does. Uh, and so without trying, let me see Let me see if I can. I am General Yunnan, scourge of the Sand Wars, defeater of Ragnar the Red, and 
the youngest nuke ever to be promoted to the rank of general in the great Nutopian army. At all. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Man, that is so great. I, I can't tell you how happy it makes me. Anytime someone mentions Union, whether it's on Twitter or Reddit or, or wherever, someone has to jump in and, like, <laughs> you know, recite the speech. I think you have made it iconic, Zara. Thank you so much for doing this interview. The fans love you. I love you. Your character is great. Uh, uh, thank you so much for having me. I love you guys. You and the crew do such an incredible job with the show. And, like, the passion that you all put into your storytelling, that's the reason you have the passion that is so palpable from your fans. Because you're just putting something out there that people love and relate to. And so just keep going forward. Thanks, man. That's very sweet of you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, Zara. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. All right. That was Zara, who's, like, my hero. Um, let's see here. Sorry about that. Is this window capture for? Ba, ba, ba. All right. So um, we are running out of time, and I got to speed up through this stuff. So let me read a few more questions, and then we'll move on to our final interview, okay? Um, here we go, all right. Da 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 uh, Let's see, what do we got here, what do we got here? Um, ba ba ba. Will we ever learn more about Hop Ops Pass in season three at Missing Ducks? Uh, stay tuned and find out. Uh, that's not an answer, ha! Um, Evan uh, at uh, Corduroido, uh, I love seeing the connection between Anne's experiences and yours as an Asian person. What was your favorite experience to write in? Uh, I agree. I, I absolutely relate to that part in um, uh, Lost in Utopia where Anne is traveling with her mom and her mom is like, you can't eat the street food, it'll give you diarrhea. And I got told that so much uh, that it made me, all it made me want to do is eat street food. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I believe in my heart it was worth it. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's diarrhea anyway? Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Armic, what is Marcy's favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, mint chocolate chip. There you go. Um, uh, ba 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 ba. Uh, at Dr. Boop, Granger, uh, there are other worlds connected, shown to us from the previous episode. Ba ba ba. Is this going to be explored in the spinoff or, or sequels? Um, you know, for me, uh, anything that would make the name of the show awkward, I won't do it. You know what I mean? So this is an amphibia-centric show. Um, it will always be connected to Amphibia and the World of Frogs. If they went to, like, a world of cats, suddenly the name would be would be pretty awkward, right? All right, let's see. ba 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 um, what, what were some of your favorite slash least favorite moments in producing the first two seasons? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, my favorite moment of, of, of all of season one is that in season one we took a we took a trip to to the Long Beach Aquarium as as a team and we learned a lot about frogs there and it was a, a day I'll, I'll never forget uh, it, the weather was beautiful everyone was just kind of like vibing and like I just it, it was one of those unforgettable experiences that you know you, you just want to crystallize and 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 hold in your pocket you know what I mean I I really that that's one of my warmest memories it's it's the people you know what I mean the show as well and the craft but like. The people are really amazing, and you'll meet some of them soon. Hopefully, I just gotta get all right. One more, one more. Let's see. Do 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 do. Uh, at Kaios uh, Caesar, uh, how did you decide that Amphibia would be a three arc story? I am a glutton for structure. You know what I mean? Just something about me. It's probably my upbringing. I don't know what it is. Uh, three act story. I just it appeals to me so much. Rule of threes. Three gems. Three girls. Three factions. Three seasons. You know what I mean? Like these are things that. There's some poetry there. I don't know, man. Something about the number three. All right. Let's do our last interview so that we can get into the group game with the rest of the crew because I'm, I'm dying to have them come in here and save me from vamping. So here we go. Here's the last interview, and it's double stuffed. I think you're really going to like it. here. Man, I got to get better at OBS, you know? Thank you all so much for being here. It means so much to me. Like, I, I can't tell you, like, it's just, it, it really is something special. Um, maybe this will be another memory that I'll want crystallized in my crazy machine. All right, let's see here. 
Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Ba, ba, ba. Oh, that's weird. I can't see it. Aha! Well, 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 well. Do 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 do. Here we go, guys. Enjoy. Hey guys, I am so excited because here with me today is the one, the only, Anna Akana, the voice of Sasha Waybright, one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite actors to work with, and we've got a fun interview today. Anna, do you want to say hi? Hi everyone! How are you? Awesome. All right, so I've got, uh, I think, six questions for you, so we'll just go down the line, but I'm super excited to hear from you. Um, much to my dismay, we haven't gotten you on like a cool Comic-Con panel yet, but We'll get you on one, hopefully, hopefully soon when not when all that stuff gets uh, back to normal. That better be a promise, man. Yes, no, I I'll promise you I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's super fun. Okay, here we go. Question one, Anna. How did you come up with Sasha's voice? When you were auditioning, what was going through your head? Um, for S Sasha is just straight up my voice. Uh, when I initially read the sides, I was like, oh, okay, she's not exactly a mean girl, but she's bossy, she's arrogant, she's kind of selfish, and I have a voice that lends itself to all of those things. I myself was Sasha when I was like 13 to 17, like very much like the girl who bossed my, my group around and was very impulsive but wanted to be the leader, wanted to be like the epitome of strength. So when I read with Eden and... and um, Jack, they were just like, we love your quality of voice just as you. You don't have to put anything onto it. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I actually, you know, um, you had come in to re read for another character and your voice kind of lived with me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even as we went into production, and what was so nice about that is, like, when it came time for Sasha, I was like, I know exactly. I know exactly <laughs> who we should grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you... You, you immediately had something. Hey, um, we're in the room, right? It's hard to see because, like, when you're auditioning for voiceover, you only talk to a specific person, and then there's just, like, a dark room shrouded, and you're like, who is here? It depends. It depends, like, where, when we're talking about it. I was probably there, and, like, that's, that's so funny because, like, you know, I had to get really good at, like, policing my own kind of, like, body language because I'm, like, very expressive. Because, mm -hmm. like, the last, thing, the last thing I would ever want is, like, someone auditioning, and they can see me going, like, or even like just being like yeah being, like, really like like interested it was it was hard but i think i was there i was there for your like very first auditions and i remember that like i think you you rode do you have a moped or a motorcycle i have a motorcycle yeah you have a motorcycle okay so i remember like we saw you motorcycle away i was like that's a sasha man you know what i mean like <sighs> very cool um okay next question Sasha is, I would say, amoral at best. Why do you think she's so popular? I think a lot of girls, and probably boys, see themselves reflected in Sasha. You know, like, I, I personally take a lot of issue with a lot of YA where the chosen one or the one with the powers is like, but I just want to be normal. I'm like, no, you don't. You would be ecstatic that you had powers. You would be like, absolutely, I'm the avatar, deal with it. And I think people see a lot of, like, themselves in Sasha, like, yes, if I went to Amphibia, this is what I would do. I would partner with Grime. I would try to take over the entire land and be its empress. Um, and I also think she's not a bad person. She, like, she makes questionable choices. She does boss around her friends. But I think Sasha is someone who goes after what she wants unapologetically, and we very rarely get to see that in female animated characters. Yeah, and I think you can't help but love someone that does that, you know what I mean, that goes after those those goals and those dreams. Um, I think that's a great point. Yeah, awesome. she's a little anti-hero. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I remember, like, when we started writing the show, you know, my favorite characters were always, like, the Vegeta, you know what I mean? Or, like, I was just like, yeah, man, or, or you know, even Draco and, and Harry Potter, like, I just love those characters, and I think Sasha, like, there's there's a little bit more texture there, you know what I mean? It's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, she's got an arc. She's got, she's got, like, it's interesting to see a character who has, like, all the traits of a leader but has to learn the compassion and how to lead people first versus them just, like, bulldozing and charging ahead. Yeah, totally. And, like, the idea, too, that you said, and I think that's such a great starting point for, like, as you're reading for her, like, she's not a bad person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not really. You know what I mean? Like, the method, eh, yeah. person, good. You know what I mean? Like, somewhere, somewhere deep down in there. 
Yeah, and I feel like she's just someone who's really ambitious and someone who is a natural born leader. And the struggle for her is like, okay, how do I endear myself to people authentically instead of like manipulating them? Because even like I think the first time she really appeared, she was teaching Grimes how to be manipulative through flattery and compliments. And it's like complimenting people is good. Noticing their strengths is good. But when you're doing it for manipulation, not so great, Sasha. Yeah, yeah, like short-term benefits, but not long-term benefits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I know I know you like you know you you produce your own content, and I know you you do manage folks as well occasionally, right? Is that correct? Yes. Or, yeah, and so like as a leader yourself, which is funny because like you're voicing this character, like do you feel like that's something that you learned about like oh you know you got to think more long term and, and non toxic in order to have like relationships that work, and then you get better work out of people. Absolutely. I mean, I used to like, I used to be so conscious of not wanting people to feel like their time's wasted or like if they had call times that were super early, but they're not being used till later. And, and so I would be very much in the zone of get it done, get it done, get it done and not as personable. And so when I got some feedback that people felt like I was cold or, you know, not exactly, you know, very charming, I was, I would, I was shocked. I was like, I'm doing my best to get you out of here. I'm doing my best to respect your time, but clearly I'm not communicating that well enough. So I, as well as Sasha, have kind of had to learn how to communicate with people emotionally. Oh, man, I relate to that, like, hardcore, you know, because, okay. like, you're just, like, go, 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 you know what I mean? Like, and I'm, I'm the same as you where I was like, how much time do we have? Okay, here's what we're doing, you know what I mean? But, yeah. but then at the end of the day, like, I did, I, I received similar feedback, honestly. Oh, like, and really? I, yeah, no, no, yeah, for sure. Like, in our first season, uh, there was a bit of feedback that was something, it was like, I wish Matt, like, you know, uh, let his appreciation uh, known a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, I think it was something like that, like an anonymous kind of, you know what I mean? But, like, yeah. I remember thinking, like, did I not say, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I thought, didn't I say, like, I really loved it? I was like, oh, I don't think I did. Yeah. I, just, I thought it. Oh. It's so weird, too, because I feel like I love compliments, but then when I really started thinking about it, I was like, oh, I'm not verbally saying that many to people. I'm yeah. thinking it, of course, but I'm not actually telling that person, like, you're doing a great job. I love your work, you know? So yeah. I think both are learning how to do that. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and I think I think maybe that the character is, like, a proxy for that almost. Like, maybe for both of us. That's really interesting. Yeah, no, I, I know. It, was, it, was, it was a, a learned thing because, like, I, man, so similar. I was just so, you know, get it done on time on budget you know what I mean but like yeah. it, it's such a people job you know what I mean all of this is and especially when you're working with the team wow interesting. oh interesting cool. yeah, that's I, know. I feel like you're so amicable and personable as is that I would never assume that but I can guess like when you're in like when you're doing your job and you're really focused on getting something done people can just read that the wrong yeah, way yeah and it's stressful like especially like you know, I don't know much about it, but live action stuff, like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Like, every minute is like, we're paying for this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. you're just like, I just want to get everyone out on time so they can get, like, eight hours of sleep. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it's, it's yeah, it was, it's tricky. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. All right. <laughs> um, number three, I think we've already covered this, it was, do you relate to Sasha? Is there any <laughs> part of her in you? But I think it's, it's so obvious now that there's a lot of you in there, but was there anything else you wanted to add? I mean, my, one of my best friends when I was in middle school, I remember I was talking to her and she's like, yeah, the first time I ever met you, I thought you were bossy and obnoxious. And then when I got to know you, I realized you're like, that's just your personality leaks over all over the place. And you're the most loyal person I've, I've, I've ever known. And I always thought that was so interesting that, because I, I have a lot of really good friends in my life where their first impression of me is very often like, I don't know if I like this person. Um, and, and so I think that's the same with Sasha. Like, you read her on the page, you first meet her, and you're like, this girl kind of seems like a mean girl. And then the more you get to know her, you're like, no, she's just very comfortable in who she is and kind of not really understanding how she's coming across socially. Um, so I definitely relate to that. I've, I've had people think, like, oh, that's probably a mean girl or something off the bat, and then they get to know me, and they're like, oh, you're a fucking nerd. Oh, can I cut? <laughs> yeah, no, of course you can. I mean, this okay. is... This is not a Disney. This is not okay. a Disney thing. Um, no, that that makes a lot of sense. And also, like you know, you 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 do sometimes you really want a Sasha like in your corner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with you, like and 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 you can draw up confidence and strength from people like that. Like your friends probably, you know, okay, first impression, a little bossy, but like yeah. you know, they they probably loved having you around you know because you made them feel confident. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and I feel like my bossiness is like. 
you know, I, I think it's assertiveness. And I think we're also taught like women who really go after what they want or like kind of like give you advice or tell you what to do. Like it's a negative thing in our society. Whereas like now all my friends love it because I'm like, did you write that script today? Huh? Did you do that thing you said you were going to do? You better go do that. I personally love having like quote unquote bossy women in my life because they, they hold me accountable and they like help reflect back to me like what I'm doing right, what I want to do more of, where I'm growing. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's so interesting that you say that because uh, I think something that was intentional with Amphibia is that you have these three girls dropped into this fantasy world where they're not being judged uh, based on their gender. They're really not. So, yeah. like, you know, Sasha as this prisoner in this Toad Tower, this, like, you know, <laughs> Toad guy is looking at her, and he's not like, well, I think this about her because she's female. He's really just like, what I have in front of me is a capable commander. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no preconceived notions and so I feel like the girls are really just free to just be themselves and like there's no none of that is here it's all yeah. like it wipes clean absolutely I love that about amphibia I love that like it their their race their gender it never comes into play it's all just about what your core gifts and your core traits are and what their emotional journey is because I definitely remember watching things like you know Sailor Moon or Powerpuff oh, yeah. Girls where, where there are there is commentary about being female in there to almost its detriment and I love that about this world, that it's, it's not even a thing. Yeah, I really wanted boys watching the show to forget the genders. Yeah. You know what I mean, of the characters. Because if they just loved the, the people, you know what I mean? That would be, like, the best thing. But I know what you mean where it's like, you know, and I love Powerpuff Girls, and I love Sailor Moon, but it was it was intent on reminding you. Yes. You know what I mean? That this stuff is gender-coded, and it's very specific and targeted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, kind of a role-playing question. I don't do you, do you do any like Dungeons and Dragons or anything or? Uh, on occasion, I like a lot of RPGs, but I I have like a gaming habit, so I kind of stay away from games now. Oh really? Like you get like too obsessed with it? Do you mean like yeah. what well, like yeah. like what kind of what is, like, like Farmville oh. or? Well, not Farmville, no. But my parents are a uh, gamer addict. My dad used to be like a WoW addict. We grew up with like every console imaginable. We nice, keep my nice. dad would make us enroll in like Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic the, the Gathering tournaments when we were. Ch so we were like heavily immersed in games. Yeah, you were just, like, Yeah, I was like, I'll lose a whole day. Um, yeah, I don't. I actually, you know, I love video games, but I've never, I've never once done a like tabletop RPG. Like I hear. Oh. All my friends, oh yeah, they talk about them all the time and like, what an adventure we had and like, what a lark. And I, I just, I was like, it's like improv, right? Like, you know what I mean? You all sit yeah. around, and you like, you be your characters and I just never, I never found an opportunity. I think you would be great at Dungeons and Dragons, honestly. That's very sweet, but like, you know, it's funny. I, I actually, I'm not very good at pretend and I'm not very good at improv, like actually. Oh! No, no, no. no. And so like, I, that's, I'm an artist. So like, I'm like, oh yeah, visuals, visuals. And I remember... <laughs> My brother, he wanted to really do Dungeons and Dragons, and I was like, "So, are there like figurines or maps?" Or he's like, "No, no, it's just all, you know." And I was like, "Ooh, mm, I don't know." I don't know. Well, I mean, if you're the dungeon master, you can decide what kind of adventure you want everyone to go on. So you can bring the maps and the visuals and the Ooh. figurines and all that stuff, and then you decide what everyone else does. Yeah, yeah. I I thought about like yeah, I I like that aspect of it. And there's like a writing component there where like if you're the dungeon master, you're like really crafting the adventure. But yeah. I like. I think I bought a book too. Like I was, I was like, I really, really would like to try this. And like I opened it, and I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And for what? Yeah. Like I, I might as well make a TV show then. Yeah. You know? My adventure can live on. Yeah, yeah. But um, someday, someday. Anyway, yeah. role playing question. Yeah. You were dropped into Amphibia. How do you think you'd do? Would you even survive? I think, honestly, I would be on the same trajectory as Sasha. I think I would immediately see the opportunity to become the queen of this land. Um, I would definitely pair up with some kind of strong commander. Uh, I, I think we would, have, we would have very parallel paths. Awesome. The perfect answer. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I would not survive. I'm no? Like a, You'd be no, dead? I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like a glamper. That's the only, only way I can do <laughs> it. I, mean, I, I think that would, be, that would be game over for me. Yeah, you can try to find Hot Pop, maybe, like, hang out with him. Yeah, I could try to find, like, the most charitable, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> goodness, like yeah, I will. I mean, I would make a beeline. Um, yeah. Oh, wow, that's that's funny. All right, uh, here we go. Kind of career-oriented. Do you have any advice for anyone that wants to get into acting? Oh, wow. I mean, I would say 
you have to be ready to face a lot of rejection. And I went into it fully thinking, I'm going to do this for 10 years. I'm going to give it all that I got, and I'm not going to reevaluate my decision for 10 years. Because I do think, you know, unless you get lucky and you get, like, a really big job very early on in your career, it is a lot of grinding. It is a lot of working for free. Um, it is a lot of making your own stuff, as I'm sure you, you know as well. And there's a lot of rejection and heartache in this business, a lot of making projects that get picked up or, you know, bought by a network or bought by a studio but never made or – you only get like one episode pilot made and then it, doesn't, it never gets picked up. And and I think it's really hard and, and difficult too when you're an actor because you could have an amazing performance and then you find out you get cut out of the movie. So uh, I think you have to do it for the love of it. But if you work really hard and you make yourself available to be found, I think this is a doable job. There's a lot of mystique around Hollywood and acting and writing, but it is just a job like everything else. That's a great like demystifying sort of, you know what I mean? Like, not to say that it's no big deal, but, like, it isn't really, right? Like, yeah. anyone can write, anyone can act, anyone can do this stuff. I think that's a, I think that's a great point. And I, the rejection is hard. Like, how do you, like, I mean, do you think you just have thick skin? Or how did you learn to kind of, like, judo throw that stuff? You know what I mean? Like, how did you yeah. kind of? I think I have the arrogance of youth. Like, I just never thought, like, in my 20s that I wouldn't make it because I was doing the work. And I think when you're very involved in the work and the process for long enough, you start to see like little rewards here and there, or little signs that you're on the right path. You'll get kind of close and you get very addicted to that feeling of like, oh man, like I almost had it. Um, and so I think like dealing with the rejection was great because I felt like every no brought me closer to a yes. Um, and so I would start really welcoming the no's. Cause it's like, okay, that one's not for me, but I'm on my way to the one that is meant for me. That, you know, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but I feel like perspective is everything. And, and sort of what you're describing is like, you know, your perspective on what is happening. I feel like you're using it to fuel your trajectory as opposed to like letting it weigh you down. Like you're like, bring on the nose. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do feel like fail. Like we, we kind of think of failure as this really terrible thing, but I'm like, no one has success without failure. It's like yeah. an equal part of the equation. Um, and the more failure you have, the chances are the more success you have because you're also, with every failure, you're learning something, you know? Every audition I didn't get, every show that never got picked up, like, I've always learned something that has carried on in my career. Yeah, I had a similar experience where, you know, pitching shows, you could just tell, like, the person sitting across from you was, like, not interested. You know yeah. what I mean? And, like, you're like, okay, 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 great. But why? Like, you know, like, what, yeah. what about the show, like, they just didn't pick up on? And so then, like, you know, I, I love telling people that Amphibia was, like, my, like, third or fourth, you know what I mean, pitch at Disney, where, like, in the first few, just, like, eyes glazed over. <laughs> no, it was, and it was, like, I could have just been, like, well, forget it, never mind. But, like, I really thought, like, okay, why did that one suck? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's make the next one, like, they'll be, maybe their eyebrows will go up a little bit, I don't know. <laughs> the first pitch I ever did, my feedback was, I don't get it. I don't get <laughs> it what's happening and I was like oh my god I'm ruined <laughs> <laughs> you don't get it like in a good way or like yeah. yeah I was like you don't get it like you want to buy it now or what like you want to know more right yeah. that's what you mean yeah <laughs> that's funny that's funny oh. yeah okay um cool last question um your character is is one of our most popular and I mean for a good reason your voice your performance like combined with this soul I think people are really resonating with do you have anything you'd like to say to all the Sasha fans out there I just want to say thank you so much to the fans like I it's so fun to see fan art of Sasha um and it just I, I love this property and I think it has such a good message and I'm so glad that it's resonating with people so I just want to say thank you to you all for watching all right that is the last of the recorded interviews so let me plug my headphones back in and Time, ladies and gentlemen, to get the crew in here. Um, oh, I took my tie off. Sorry, this is <clears throat> my skin. I'm a public figure. Okay, I'm gonna try to uh, get the crew in here, and we're gonna play a game together. Okay, it's gonna be fun, and I'm I'm super sorry. I, I told them like I think 7:40 or something, and it's like eight. So let's let's jump in. Um, one second, as I as I call them and get this thing going. I hope you guys are having a good time. I'm like sweating in here. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Hey guys, are you ready? Yes. 
are you are are you emotionally prepared for this? <laughs> okay, so um, because like everything's so clunky and you know I, I don't even know if this is really gonna work. I'm gonna patch it in, but I'm gonna need your guys' help to like tell me whether the audio is being actually patched through Twitch. I mean through yeah through Twitch. All right, one second. It is going through. Oh yeah, my advice. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> oh man, is this even is this even possible, guys? Is this gonna work? Yes, yes, yes. Let me try. Uh, so I, I. Uh, let's see. Is this a video call or is this just? We can just do this. Yeah, I mean. Audio. We could put our video on. It's it's up to you. I don't want to. I have a feeling this is. Oh man, I think you're asking me the tough questions. Um, I think I'm. I think everything's going through the same. So it's like mixing like automatically or trying to. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you you should you should walk me through it because I want you guys to be heard. Um, okay, so where where should I go? Yeah, you said it was it was a source thing. Yeah, source when you audio capture. Okay. Audio input capture. Yep. And then in your current your original source, you should right click it and do properties. Or um yeah, and make the device be your your microphone. Okay. Um, we may need to pause the chat for a second and try to figure this out. Uh, let's see, video capture. So I think what I'm going to do, okay, so I can, yeah, because I, I need to be able to turn mine down and like make you guys like another source, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Image capture. Let me let me clean clean some of this stuff too. <laughs> um, will you guys introduce yourselves, please? Like, go go down go down the line and and let's let's start with you, Ali. Uh, on my screen, you're first. Um, Ali Ty, upper left. Please uh, say hello. Uh, your name, what you do. Tell people deadlines. <laughs> right. Um, Is it me? I think I'm next. I hope that's me. Hi, everyone. My name is Andy, uh, and I am the lead color designer on Amphibia. Hi, 
my name is Brittany, Brittany Martinez. Martinez. Yeah, um, and I do location design on Zillow. So we're going to the next row. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it, Todd! You say something. Everyone's saying this thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, I am doing just like I am doing window capture on only Discord right now. Is that? Oh, that's just that's just an image. So that's in OBS. I have like I have like a fun setup. That's not the desktop. No, 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 no. Um, this is kind of like like a like a, a canvas. You know what I mean? Like on OBS, you can kind of like lay it out and like. Um, but I do have, I guess I have this thing here, but this is, this is lower now. Is it just still really hot? Hello, guys? Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing about this is that we will always be, like, a few moments behind and it's super awkward. But if they, it, it is it, is it? unintelligible for them? Like, can they not make us out? Oh, damn, that's a shame. Okay, hmm. Uh, yeah, let me see. Let me see what the, the audio settings are. Is that in the, oh, here we go. Hold on. Oh, shit. This is, uh, damn, I thought game, game mode was where it would work. 
thing. Wait, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm I'm sort of in a mess right here. Let me let me turn this thing off for a second. All right. Um, sorry, chat. One second. We're just trying to figure it out. Yeah, I know. I guess we should have done a. Very busy week, though, if I'm honest. Very busy week. Very, very, very busy week. Oh, I turned it down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now now it's back up. My voice is up now. I was hoping that by turning myself down, it would, like, they'd be able to hear you. Yeah, 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 but uh, maybe not. Okay, streamer mode is, is enabled. Um, okay, so what were you saying? What were you saying, Adam? What should I I should go to on uh, on Discord, right? Yeah, so you just press the Yeah, I'm in there. Yep, yep, I see it now. Yep, I just turned it up. It was at it was at medium. No, it's, yeah, you sound great to me. I just hope that chat can hear you now. Yeah, we're going to need confirmation. Um, I think, I think, I think if we sang right now, we would absolutely break, like, the stream. It would just blow up into fire. So, did we, did we get any feedback uh, on the volume in the chat? Well, then I just turned it down again, so now it's going to be too quiet. Okay, whatever. Uh, in, can can people hear us and, and make this out? It, it just caught up on me. It was so quiet. It wasn't clear why it was quiet. I would say that the last thing I was doing was just watching if I was there was uh, fewer in the chat where you have to click the bubble. Yes. How, how's this? Uh, say something. Sort of. How, how? Oh man, just the way I like it, huh? Um. Wait, uh, what did they what did they suggest? You already did that. Oh. Oh, all of yours is are down for me. Let me, I'm going to turn them all up now. Why are they down? I... Look, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to take that risk. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a really good idea. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do that. Well, and, and and my real fear, my my real fear is that like I'm using like an old version of OBS, and that's like kind of screwing everything up. Um, There's just so many settings that could just switch them all. Okay, so, um, can they hear you guys now? feedback on that? Oh, it's still not caught up yet. Um, I'm so sorry, you guys, for the, the technical difficulties. Uh, we have such an amazing, we have such an amazing, he, I have such an, uh, Yeah, 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 I, I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. Uh, so when I was, um, inter well, when I was interviewing, um, uh, oh, wait, I'm an idiot. Wait, how's this actually? I, I actually, you know, I'm such oh, a you sound great. Yeah, I'm such a fool. I'm such a fool, you guys. I had my headphones plugged in. So I think if I use if I use the speaker on, on the computer like I was doing for the for the videos, you guys should get captured effectively now. If that turns out to be a pun, I don't know what <laughs> should we test now? Like yeah, testing. Okay. So it's it's working and I can tell because I can I can see the levels. I think they can finally hear you guys really well. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let's see how this is going. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <That's> so exciting. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. I know. Oh my goodness. Talk about building up the tension for the finale. <laughs> the fa the finale's got oh, nothing. Ah, uh, yes. I also, you guys should know, you the, the audio quality is not good. So, so you need to be you need to be careful about speaking one at a time. You know what I mean? Like don't talk don't talk over each other. So, um, I think that like it's important. Yeah, not to anytime we all speak at once, it turns into like Satan. <laughs> Just FYI. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna do the quiz. But it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a much simplified version of what I was thinking. All right. So I'm gonna read. One Say what? One question only. No. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Five questions. Five questions. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna read the question, and whoever wants to answer it, just say me, 
and then you can give it a shot, okay? No, 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 no. We got to do this. Yeah, just say, uh, you're going to say your name. We'll do it live. Okay. I just say you can say an name, you know, whatever name you hear first. Oh, yes. I'll say a name. Sure, that sounds good. I'll look at, I'll look at the, the names uh, lighting up. Okay, so this, this quiz was written by um, Jack, and it's crazy. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Yes. And chat, please feel free to quiz along with us. Question number one. How many slingshots does Sprig have in his closet in Handy Ann? The options are A, 15, B, 22, C, 60, or D, 34. Any guesses? Uh, 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 20, 22. Andy, that is correct. <laughs> All right. Question number two. And some of these are unfair because I think Adam wrote some of these. He's <laughs> like the, the, the answers. <laughs> so, so you better know. You better know. Here we go. Question number two. What is the name of the stuff Loggle sells which brings the veggies to life in Handy Ann? Is it A... Uh, Loggle's Miracle Pot. Yeah, that's okay, great. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so you think... So you think you're all that, do you? That don't impress me much, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe I play in this game. <laughs> All right, next question. In Sprig's ballad, how many times does Sprig say hop hop coward? A, five times. B, ten times. C, two times. D, nine times. Nine times. No. Nine. Wait, who's 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 who's. Who's a uh, who's a uh, monkey D Luffy or I'm sorry is that Ace is that? Uh, that's Ace. Excuse you. Oh sorry. <laughs> you, you got it. You got it first with nine. Congratulations. <gasps> All right. Next. I that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. All right. Here we go. And he cowered and cowered and cowered and cowered and cowered and cowered and cowered. Is that nine? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Which of these is not a member of the dreaded Hasselback family? Are you ready? Not a member. Is it A, Judro, B, Ruth, C, Hudrick, or D, Talbert? It is C. Good job, Ace. Is there is there a function for me to display your names in in Discord? Do you guys know? I'm trying to. Like under the video there. The okay. Here for a yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hover. I'll hover as long as it takes. I want, I want everyone to, to, to tie the name to the icon. You know. Okay. Good job. You guys are killing it. I, I can't believe you're getting any of these right. Here we go. <clears throat> Next question, from Ann Hunter. Which flavor of grubble does not exist? Is it A? Strawberry, B, pistachio, C, chocolate, or D, blueberry? Blueberry. 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 
Wait, I saw uh, Andy. Andy uh, Flex, y you got it. What? What? What did you say? Uh, I said B blueberry. That's correct. Good job. Um, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> When Polly grabs, Fergus Frog finds a friend. Which of these was not a book on the bookshelf? Not a book. Was it A, Wart and Peace, B, The Frog Bible, C, The Great Natsby, or D, Wog? <laughs> That's correct! <laughs> It's, it's a, a good, good book, book but, but there's, there's no, no way Disney, Disney would have been okay with that. Oh man, all the answers are here, baby. All right, here we go. Here's a tough one, or maybe not, because you worked on this episode. Um, when Sprig is counting mushroom bars, what number does he get to when Polly interrupts him wanting a bath? Is it A, 21, B, a 52, C, 18, or D, 29? It is not B. Alexa, what did you say? Wait, did, did, anyone, did anyone say D as in dog? No, it was D. It was D. And I am D. <laughs> well, that's not how that works, Drew. Uh, no, we're not out of here. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's the first. first that's the first one you got wrong. Congratulations. All right, next. Um, in truck stop, Polly. In the in the truck stop, there's a trucker hanging out by a jukebox. What image is on his hat? A. A heron. B. A lily pad, C, a cattail, or D, a worm? Cattail. It's D, a worm. Uh, All right. In. Worms win eight. What? I died. Okay. We're passing on that. All right. Um. During Anne's theater flashback, where she's she's traumatized, right? How many other teeth are on stage with her? Is it... Is it A, 12... Wait, is it A, 12, B, 7, C, 6, or D, 18? It's seven. What? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Let me see. It says. It says how many teeth are on stage with her. So no. Okay. Cool. Moving on. What is the name of the restaurant? in um, uh, Toadcatcher that Percy and Braddock go to? Is it A, the Mossy Rock, B, Under the Old Log, C, Wooden Pleasures, or C, or, or D, Little Ground? Is someone like is someone like opening a hamburger?
Moving on. We're going to do a few more questions because the audio is it's a little, this is a little much. Okay, here we go. Who was the director from, or for, from Point to Poppin? Is it A, Mary C. Hooper, B, Amelia Dreyfus, C, Catherine G. Bingus, or D, Lydia Strauss? Oh man, who could forget Catherine, Catherine G. Bingus? All right, all right, here we go. We're gonna do two more. Mm. So in the mystery, in the in the not mystery shack, the Curiosity Hut. All right, all right, hold on. What? What? What are you doing? Andy. Oh my God! Careful. We can. We can like hear everything, man. All right. All right. Whatever. I lost my train of thought. Okay. Question. Question. In 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 the Curiosity Hut which is not the Mystery Shack, there is a praying mantis with a basketball jersey called Airbug, right? What is the number on Airbug's jersey? Is it A, 8, B, 16, C, 2, or D, 4? Yeah, who's Mystic Squirrel? Is it the balloon? The balloon frog? Yes. You're on the green way inside again. Yes. Yeah, I. Might need to mute yourself or. Okay, he muted it. Greg? Greg, are you okay, man? He muted himself. Okay. I'm so curious about what it was, though. <laughs> Saram wrap. Oh, got it. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, okay. Yeah, Greg, it's a laugh microphone. Airbug, airbug, guys. What's the number? Is it A eight, B sixteen, C two, or D four? Silver? That's correct. It's eight. Yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. All right. Let's do. Ba, ba, ba. Let's do two more. All right. Here we go. According to uh, Marcy's calculations, how big is Hop Hop's head? Ah, oh, shit. Did Adam write this? All right. Here we go. A. I did. A. A, 42 centimeters, B, 62 centimeters, C, 52 centimeters, D, 32 centimeters. What do you guys have them? Uh, 52? It is... B, 62. The answer is B, 62. Uh, 52. Wow. Yay! That's a big boy! Amazing. Amazing. This whole thing is rigged. I'm not allowed to answer. <laughs> All right. Here's the last question, and you'll never guess it. Are you ready? How do you turn up the cruise audio? Yeah, I know. That is the question, isn't it? How do you make this work? All right, here we go. Um, the king, he has a credit card. What? Are the first four numbers on that credit card? What? All right. All right. Is it A? Is it A? Two three nine seven. B. Five nine one seven. C. 
No one said it yet. It is eight four six two C. Is it nine two six four? One two three four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, all right, let's do one more. Just one more. Um, Wait, I gave you the answer. It was C, uh, uh, 8462. Oh, did you? I mean, sorry, you were lost in the cacophony of crackling. Oh, that's true. That's a good point, good point, good point. Very true. All right, last one. And then I'm then I'm cutting you guys off. Um, who, who is the first Wartwoodian that the Chickalisk turns to stone? Is it A, Stumpy, B, Felicia, C, Loggle, or D, Chuck? Hey, Chuck, Loggle. Oh. I'm Stumpy. Stumpy. I have five big Stumpy. It is unfortunately B, Felicia. Um, all right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for playing. I'm gonna have to say goodnight. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I couldn't, couldn't get your audio working. We'll, we'll have a better stream one day where you all sound like be the beautiful angels you are. I stream enjoy the episode. All right. So TJ, TJ, I'm gonna call TJ. I'm gonna call you, and then we're gonna do some music stuff. All right? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, should I? Yeah, I'll await your call. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna call you directly. I, I, yeah, no, I'm. I, I, I think the best thing to do is just to play the audio on the speaker like we're doing. Unfortunately. Okay, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this bad boy. Whoa. All right. Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry that that was um, so difficult. So the, the, the last thing I really wanted to do was kind of like, you know, uh, have a little talk with TJ about like, you know, the music on the show and he was going to play a little bit for you guys because um, he, he had all his, his stuff ready live. Um, I hope we can get it to work. OK, so give me one second. I'm going to call him up. But we are we are running out of time here, so. I, I don't know. I don't know what we'll have time for. Let's see. Uh, TJ, my friend, where are you? Also, again, I should throw out caveat. I hope the episode drops at nine. God, I have no idea. You know what I mean? What's going to happen? Friends. TJ. TJ, TJ, TJ. Hey, TJ. I hope the chat can hear you. Can hear you well. I'm sure they can. You sound very crisp uh, to yeah, me. Yeah. Um, so, oh, you think so... I have a microphone right here, so I'll try to get nice and close. No, you sound, you sound wonderful. So time is, time is unfortunately running out. I, I was wondering if, as a kind of closer, you'd be willing to play any music for, for the chat before we kind of just closed it out, because I think... At 9 p.m., the episode is expected to drop, so we just we don't have time for much more, unfortunately. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just play Steam real quick. That's cool. 
Yeah, I think we and, would um, love to hear it. And I'm going to do it... I'm going to have to do it in two passes. So the first thing you'll hear is kind of the chords, and then I'll do the melody. But it's very short. So let me just make sure everything's working. Can you hear this, Matt? Yes. Okay, so Pro Tools is hooked up. Okay, so here we go. Also, for any guitar nerds, this is in D A D G A E tuning. people in the chat can hear this if not just this that it sounds incredible <laughs> all right here we go here's the melody Beautiful. And there you have it. Thank you so much, TJ. Thank and you're you you are such an amazing oh, yeah. person to work with. You know what I mean? Like the music is so important to this show and you do such a beautiful, beautiful job giving the characters themes and telling the story through music. And I just it would just not be the same show without you. You are inextricable from it. Well, thank you very much. It's such an honor to be on the show and um I love working with the crew and I hope everybody loves the uh season two finale i'm excited for it to be out there awesome all right guys i'm 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 gonna do the raffle um in the next couple of hours i i have a an amazing algorithm or or a a script that my my wife wrote that's gonna pick the winners so i will announce the seven winners uh uh later tonight because i just want to make sure that there's a little bit of time for people to submit we'll have more interviews more amas and stuff in the future I'm sorry for all the technical difficulties with this stream, uh, but, you know, hey, I'm so happy that we were able to build some excitement for the finale. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think. So thank you so much, everyone. Bye, TJ. See you later. Hey guys, I'm still here. Um, so again, as a caveat, I don't know if the episode is really coming out tonight. I know for sure it's coming out, you know what I mean, tomorrow, uh, officially the stream, or sorry, not the stream, the, the on linear, it should be airing at around 8 p.m. You know, we worked so hard on this episode and uh, we're so proud of it and we can't wait for you to see it. Um, thank you for everyone that, that has supported the show and supported me and supported the team. Uh, it means it means so much to us. Um, I will like you know do more like stuff like this, and the next time I do, I'll I'll make sure the technical stuff is figured out better. But honestly, your energy, your passion, it has done so much for us. Like I really was having a very emotionally difficult time, and reading your feedback really picked.